Hey, good morning, friends. Thank y'all for joining me today. Today I'm on my home place, and I'm on my home place for a special reason. I'm gonna pick some muscadines and some scuppernons because we're gonna make some jelly today. So y'all come along and let's pick these scuppernons and muscadines. So the the ones that you really wanna pick are the ones that are kind of really a deep black color that are not as shiny. I don't know if you can see the difference. I'm gonna pick one that's not completely ripe. So, as you'll notice, see the difference in the way they look? This dark black one, um, deep purple one, it's, it's not real shiny, it's kind of dull looking, as opposed to this one. This one is shiny. You can kind of tell by the difference with the way they feel too. That one's kind of soft and this one's more firm. This is really the best time to pick a muscadine when it gets that kind of a little bit more dull look to it and it's not as shiny, that's the best time to harvest these. A lot of these are hiding in deep in the vines. The ones that are more exposed, the birds beat you to them sometimes. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. You just gotta go in there and get them. Like a little Easter egg hunt. There are not as many of them out here on the open areas. Part of it might be because we pruned these a little bit late this year, or my sister and brother pruned these a little bit late. Oh, good Lord at the ants. Whew, I just got an ant hail. They lit my left leg up. So pro tip, if you're picking stuff in the south, you better look around your area where you're harvesting, make sure there's not any big ant hails because they will light you up. It's getting pretty warm out here. So let me get these finished picking and we're going to take them to the house and make some jelly out of them. So that's today's harvest and it's time to wash them and get them in the cook pot ready to cook down for some jelly. Right, I've washed them a couple times now. I'm gonna put water up to the level with the muscadines and get ready to cook them. And that'll give us the juice to make some jelly. I just put the water in there to cover the muscadines and scuppernons up. And now I'm gonna put them on the cooktop and cook them down. And then we'll be ready for the jelly. Now just to wait for it to simmer. You can skip this step if you want to because you're gonna mash these and strain them at the end to get the liquid for the jelly, but I like taking Granddaddy's potato masher and squishing the scuppernons and the muscadines to go ahead and release the pulp. And Whenever you can use a family heirloom kitchen utensil, I think it makes things taste better. I love using my mamas and my mamas and my aunts and Patrick's granddaddies and grandmothers. I love using their utensils. Everything just tastes better when you put that extra love into it. So the muscadines and scuppernines are cooked down well enough and it's cooled a little bit. Now it's time to strain it off and get the liquid ready to make jelly. I love this big wooden spoon. I have no idea where I got it, but it works really well to 
move this stuff around and try to get the majority of the liquid out before I put it in my smaller funnel to try to squeeze the rest of it out. Pushing the rest of the pulp out. So I'm following the directions on my sure gel box and I've got five cups of my prepared liquid in my pot. I've already turned it on to a medium heat. I'm going to go ahead and put my sure gel packet in there to dissolve it. Now I'll let it come to a rolling boil. And then I will put my sugar in there, bring it back to a rolling bowl, and count it for a minute at the rolling boil. And then you'll be ready to jar this up. So this is that full rolling boil that cannot be stirred down when it's boiling. So now it's time to add the sugar to the fruit juice and, and pectin. Now that's gonna look like a lot of sugar. And it is a lot of sugar. But you have to be able to follow the directions, the tried and true directions for safe food preservation. So now that we've got the seven cups of sugar in there, we stir it constantly. And when it returns back to a full rolling bowl that cannot be stirred down with the spoon, then I'll start a timer for a minute and then it'll be ready to jar up. So the same water that I'm gonna to use to water bath the jelly after it gets jarred up, that's the water I've had my jars in to sterilize them, to get them ready to receive the jelly. I'm gonna just pull them out like this and then I'm gonna pour the remainder out by hand. Be careful not to drop that water in here. That sugar's taking a little while. Ooh, that's hot, hot, hot. Ooh. That'd be hot. I hear my grand dog out there barking. We are babysitting. And now I like being in the country. She likes barking at the squirrels and whatever might be out there. All right, so the sugar is dissolving. I'm just gonna stir it until, it until it's ready to put in the jar. You cannot walk away at this time. You have to keep an eye on the sugar and the juice. If you walk away right now, you might ruin it. Got me a little cup to ladle it into the jars. Making jelly takes me back to when I was a kid, when I used to help mom and daddy put up jelly. It's a lot of pride in putting up your own jelly and putting your own food into the pantry. Of course, back in the day, that was how we got by. The majority of the food we ate came out of the freezer or out of the pantry. Okay, y'all can see right now that this is a full rolling bowl that will not stir down with my spoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer and we're gonna do this for a minute and pray it doesn't boil over and make a mess on my cooktop. Y'all can see from there though, this will not be stirred down. So, a minute and then I'll turn it off and then we'll skim off the foam and then we'll put it in the jars, put it in the hot water bath for five minutes and then we'll have us some scuppernon muscadine jelly. It's 
See, it didn't take long. If I would have stepped away from here, I might have missed it and might have scorched some of this. Cannot step away when you're making jelly. Okay, that's a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Let some of the bubbles die down. If you wanna put butter in here to uh, cut down on some of the foam, you can. I forgot to do that, doesn't matter because I'm gonna eat it. Just kind of gather the foam, scoop it into this little glass. And y'all don't forget to check the rims of your jars to make sure you don't have any cracks. You sure don't wanna waste your time making jelly if you're using a jar that's got a crack on the top of it because it will not stay preserved if you don't get a good seal. And I firmly believe if I could come up with a recipe to candles that smelled like scuppernons and muscadines do when they're cooking, those candles would be a top seller because it smells fine. Fine, I'm telling you. Okay, now it's time to put it in these hot, hot jars. Wipe it off. Wipe the rim off. Get your little lid. Let's get your rim. And down it goes in the hot water bath. Let me go ahead and turn it back on. Sometimes you gotta blow it to make it ignite. I don't know why. Okay. Now on to the next jar. So my jelly's in the hot water bath cooking for five minutes with the water just boiling over it. And I'm gonna taste test it while I'm waiting for that to finish in the water bath. Let's see, let's see if it turned out any good. Oh my y'all. That's some good jelly right there. If you don't have some muscadines, you need to get you a friend that's got some muscadines or go to a local orchard and pick you some because that is some good jelly right there. It is worth the teetotal mess that I have in my kitchen right now. Y'all can only see in this little part of the kitchen and it's kind of cluttered up, but my kitchen is a disaster. After cooking supper and making jelly, it's worth every bit of that disaster. That's gonna make some good peanut butter and jelly sandwiches right there. So if y'all like the videos that we're sharing, like and subscribe so you'll see when we're dropping new videos. And y'all go grow you something to eat. Remember, teach your kids, teach your grandkids. We'll see you next time.